We have some fast wind from a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and we're already beginning to feel its effects. And we have two bright regions on the sun's backside that are firing off multiple solar storms. What do these things mean for you? The stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is definitely picking up. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see that coronal hole there that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the next couple days. It could bump us up to active conditions and even bring aurora down to mid-latitudes for a short while. But that's not the big story. The big story is on the back side of the sun. Do you see that bright region there on the east limb in stereo's view? Well, that's old region 27, 38, and 39. Now, they fired a solar storm back on the 26th and then watch this on the 30th. Wham! Bam! Do you see that? There are two solar storms that were launched on the sun's backside. So these de regions are definitely still arguing, and we're going to be very excited to see them rotate back into Earth view here in the next few days because they could end up being solar storm producers. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase, with the new moon being on the 5th. And even by the 7th, the moon will still only be about 5% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, now's a perfect time to catch those dim objects in the sky. You know, like Sunday, maybe a meteor shower. Speaking of meteor showers, this week Earth is passing through the debris field of Comet Halley, which is known for its very fast meteors that leave long streaks across the sky. Now, the shower is supposed to peak between the 4th and the 6th of May, which pairs well with our new moon on the 5th. So, you night sky watchers, if you get into really dark skies, you could see up to about 20 meteors an hour. And that makes the, this meteor shower one of the best of the entire year. So, be sure to check your local weather for clear skies. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are already beginning to feel the effects from the fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, but it's getting harder to tell what kind of impact these uh, fast wind streams are going to have on Earth as we get closer and closer to solar minimum and these coronal holes weaken a bit. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 40% chance of a major storm. I know that's quite a bit of a spread there. At mid latitudes, we're also expecting active conditions with only about a 10% chance of a minor storm. And these conditions will continue over the next couple days before things really begin to settle down and go back to being pretty quiet. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green right now when it comes to solar flares because we have a spotless sun facing Earth right now. But that is going to change in just a few days because old region 27, 38, and 39 are going to be rotating back into Earth view and they are firing solar storms. So that means they're pretty active. What's nice about that is it means the solar flux is going to rise. We're in the high 60s right now, but we will slowly rise into the low 70s, possibly even the mid 70s by next week. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you guys are going to be loving life here in the next few days and possibly over the next two weeks as these regions continue rotating across the earth facing disk. The only thing is that you might have some noise on the bands simply because these are actually popping off a few small flares here and there as well as maybe some solar storms. So expect that. But GPS users, your reception should remain pretty good. It shouldn't be too much of a problem because we're not expecting any radio blackouts. Now, also because we're near solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this includes you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include you prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up. We have a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone right now, and we're already beginning to feel the effects from the fast wind. We could be reaching active conditions, possibly even storm levels, and the aurora could come down possibly to mid-latitudes here over the next day or so. So you aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged. Now on top of that, we have two regions that are going to be rotating back into Earth view from the sun's backside, and they could also be solar storm 
producers. So your aurora photographers definitely keep keep an eye out for these regions. Who knows? We might get a solar storm launched at us. Now, you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, those regions are also good news for you because it's going to boost that solar flux up, which means radio propagation on Earth's day side will increase once again. And these conditions could last easily over the two weeks that it takes for these regions to kind of pop and fizzle all the way across the Earth-facing disk, so enjoy. Now, as far as you GPS users are concerned, well, we've got a little bit of a solar storm going right now, so you could see some aurora, and, you know, that causes issues for your GPS reception. And also near the Dawn Dust Terminators may be a little bit dicey for you right now, but all things considered, your GPS reception should still look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.